the Romney Hythe and Dimchurch Railway is in Kent and runs from Hythe down the east coast of Romney Marsh to Dungeness Point. 13 and a half miles long, 15 inch gauge, it's a real main line in miniature, was dreamt up by two wealthy enthusiasts during the 1920s. Unfortunately, one of those two gentlemen did not live to see the railway built, and today's film is about him. Louis Voro Borowski was born in London in 1895. Borowski's parents were wealthy landowners from Manhattan, New York. On moving to England, Borowski's father self-styled himself Count Borowski, but in truth he was no more a count than Arthur Strong. He was, however, a keen amateur racing driver, but in 1903 was killed in a Mercedes at the Le Turbe hill climb in France. In 1909, Elliot Borowski's widow bought Higham Park near Bridge in Kent, moving there with the young Louis. Two years later, Mrs. Borowski died, leaving 16-year-old Louis with the estate, land in Manhattan, and 11 million pounds in cash. Just like his father, Louis Borowski became a keen motorist and wasted no time in taking up the sport. He was an early investor in the nascent Aston Martin Company, and many of his first victories were in those cars. Borowski had so much money he could afford to have racing cars on both sides of the Atlantic, and he did, becoming a very experienced and skilled driver. Assisted by his good friend Clive Gallup, who also was an engineer and fellow racing driver, Borowski decided to have a go at building his own car. This car was constructed on the remains of a pre-war Mercedes chassis and stuffed to overflowing with a 23-litre Maybach aero engine. The car was finished with a crude four-seat body and a rather clumsy-looking exhaust system to try and fool the scrutineers at Brooklands, who would give it less of a handicap. The clerk of the course would not let them use their original chosen name, Cascara Sagrada, the name of a powerful laxative, so instead they changed it to Chitty Bang Bang, Chitty Bang Bang could be mistaken as for the noise of the engine, but in fact was a World War I Royal Flying Corps song about the pleasures of the flesh. Borowski needn't have worried about the scrutineers. On its first outing, the car won two races and achieved a top speed of 112 miles an hour. Borowski and Gallup continued to develop the car. They streamlined the bodywork and added a quarter of a ton of sand over the rear axle to try and keep the back of the car on the road. As can be seen in this photograph, the 23-litre engine was pretty hard on the tyres and punctures a constant problem. Enthused by the success of their first car, Roski and Gallup built a second Chitty. Using an 18-litre Benz engine and early Mercedes chassis, it still survives to this day. It never achieved the same racing success as Chitty 1 and after a short while was turned into a very useful touring car. A third Chitty was also constructed using a 160 horsepower Mercedes aero engine. Unlike the other two Chitties, this was shaft drive and had four wheel brakes. Like the second Chitty, it was soon turned into a touring car and rather astonishingly, both Chitties two and three were taken on a tour down through France, across the Mediterranean and into the Sahara Desert. Influenced and encouraged by his friend, Captain John Howie, Roski also built a one mile, 15 inch gauge railway around the park at Higham. The Bassett Loke Company constructed him a fine Atlantic locomotive, which was named Count Louis. In 1924, Borowski drove to Stuttgart in Chitty 3 to negotiate to join the Mercedes team. During the 1924 Italian Grand Prix at Monza, and a few minutes after this photograph was taken, Borowski hit a tree and was killed instantly. This immensely likeable, charismatic and skilled racing driver was laid to rest next to his parents at Burton Lazars in Leicestershire. Borowski's estate and effects were sold off. Adrian Conan Doyle bought Chitty One, but it was scrapped late in the 1930s. Count Louis, the locomotive, was sold to the Fairbourne Railway in Wales and for the next 60 years pulled passenger trains on an almost daily basis. It still survives. There was a fourth chitty under construction at the time of Zabrowski's death, 
also known as the Heim Special. It was sold for £125 to John Parry Thomas and became the basis of Babs, the racing car in which he broke the land speed record in 1926 and was killed in 1927. The author Ian Fleming, who as a boy had visited Brooklyn and seen Borowski race, later wrote a children's book about a magical car called Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, inspired by Borowski. Roald Dahl subsequently turned the book into a screenplay, and the rest you probably know. Somewhat remarkably, a 16-minute silent film exists now of Borowski, Gallup, Pixie Marix, and Count Louis, all in a rather silly homemade film filmed at Higham Park in 1924. It's uploaded on another platform, but links are in the description. It's a brilliant film. Do watch it. Thank you very much for watching this.